Hello, and welcome to The Unique CPA with your host, Randy Crabtree. The goal of our show is to keep you at the forefront of the changing face of public accounting by having conversations with fascinating leaders and bringing you their stories, insights, and advice. The Unique CPA podcast is brought to you by Trimerit, the specialty tax professionals. Today, our guest is Duke Alexander Moore. Duke is a certified tax coach and an enrolled agent. He is the owner of Duke Tax, which he started in 2018. Duke Tax is a professional firm that works with creators, artists, and entrepreneurs. I think you're going to have a fun time listening to Duke today because he has extreme passion for a couple topics that I do as well, which is tax and education. I'm going to get his tagline wrong. I'll ask him after I mess it up here. But he talks about making uh, tax easy to understand. And because of his passion and his, his goal of educating, he has become, I guess, TikTok famous. He's got 3.4 million TikTok followers in which he it goes under the, uh, uh, the what do you call it, handle? Yeah. Handle of Duke Loves Taxes. I think that's his handle on all uh, social media. Also, Instagram, 137,000 followers there. He's been featured on Good Morning America, CNN, CNBC. Duke. Welcome to the Unique CPA. How? What man? What an intro! I think I think I need to like I need a copy of that, you know. And like when I'm on a big stage one day, I need like the, you know like you ready to rumble? But we're just playing Randy's voice right there. That was amazing, brother. Thank you for that. No problem. You are you were already on the big stage. Apparently, I uh, met you a couple weeks ago at QuickBooks Connect, yep. which was great and awesome. Mm-hmm. The Connect was great, great and time. meeting you was great. All right, likewise. But, but I, I came back to the office. I was telling my marketing department about this guy I met, Duke. He's got this Duke Loves Texas. And they went crazy. They knew you. They all knew you. I didn't realize yeah. this was a thing. It's exciting. That's pretty awesome. I mean, it's yeah. it's and it's for doing good. You're out educating people on a subject that's pretty hard to understand sometimes. Yeah, it's a great feeling. So that's good to know. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you about that. But before we do that, because you have this passion, you can tell in the videos, your passion comes through for taxes. Where did this come from? How did you start? We're just going to jump in with what's your what's your tax origin story? Yeah, let's get straight to it. So I was always like, I would say like a nerd or math. Like I was always a numbers person um, growing it up. I remember my mom bought me like this, like multiplication table. I don't know. It was some game. It was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm like, okay, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like numbers. So <laughs> it was pretty cool. So how I got involved in taxes, I know I always wanted to be like deal with numbers, whether it be petroleum engineering or something that had to deal with math. But how I got into the tax world is actually when I was around 15 years old. Uh, I did like modeling here in here, here in Dallas, Texas. I worked with the agency, so we did. I was really big with Jason Penny. You walk on him, I'm like, oh my god, there's Duke. Um, <laughs> you, uh, I did Neiman Marcus, Free to Lay. I was on the 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 back of game boards but like at that time little did i know i was 1099 they don't tell you that they don't tell you that till <laughs> till you till february where you get that 1099 in the mail like, hey yeah i forgot to tell you but uh yeah all this is subject to uh you know fica taxes income federal taxes you name it we're in texas no state taxes but um so i was like what is this so I had, my parents never seen it before either either they're you know w2s their entire life so right you know, they're like, all right, look, we're going to drive you down here at H&R Block. We're going to figure this out together. Um, so then they kind of taught me about the entrepreneur lives, small business, write-offs. Uh, they, I filed my taxes there. I ended up with a tax bill about $1,500 my first time filing taxes. I'm like, what? I thought you were supposed to get a refund. So <laughs> that was like a surprise to me. I'm like, you know. Um, but that's where I really kind of got interested about taxes. I'm like, okay, this is, this is really, really cool. Um, so I went to school, you know, I really just wanted to do taxes. Like, I don't know. I just loved it. I went to school, become a CPA, realized you don't have to be a CPA to do taxes, dropped out of college, still in debt. So we're paying that back. But I became an EA instead because I found out about an EA while I was in college. I'm like, damn, well, that's all I want to do. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, right. they haven't taken sign language in Spanish and, you know, like, this. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Economics, macro, micro, like, okay. Um, so yeah, I dropped out. Came in the A's, started my business, always been passionate about educating people and making it really easy to understand. And where the passion really comes from itself is, where, you know, 
actually people saying thank you or you helped me or this is how you helped me. You know, our family's able to eat now. I didn't know about this credit. You know, there's things out there and it just frustrates me so much because there's things out there that can help so many people that it's just we just lack the education. Why do we lack the education? Maybe people just aren't, you know, motivated to learn about it or maybe the education's not out there. But, you know, it's kind of boring. So I, I took that problem like, okay, how can we get this education? Because it's super important, especially during the COVID times, we got a stimulus check, get a child tax credit, you could have opted out of it, you got the PPP, you got the ERC. I mean, there's so much stuff out there that people just don't know about. So my whole goal was just like, get this information out there, but understand that there's a problem that taxes is boring, but how do we, you know, like get rid of that? So my whole goal was just, I really had just a passion, just, you know, make it entertaining, educating, and, you know, make sure the information still getting out there. That's awesome. So, yeah. so in 2018, so it's only four years now or yeah. whatever, four plus years that you started your business doing tax and accounting. And, and did you, were you doing the social media on taxes before that? Was that after that? When did this get born? Yeah. So I was like creating videos, like even like in like, in like middle school, I was like, I was a video creator. Uh, but how the social media, I, I would say it started in 2019. Like I, I heard about TikTok. So I'm like, let me see what this thing's talking about. Like, you know, people just be dancing on here. Like, you know, but you know, you get, <laughs> you know, I started checking out and this video I came across about taxes. This guy talking about taxes. He had a million views. I'm like, first of all, you're wrong. Like the video was wrong. <laughs> Second of all, I'm like, <laughs> I could do this. Like I could, I, I could do this. Like, so it's really like inspiring what happened there. I'm like, okay. Like I looked at it. So I'm like, Oh, you know, I, I could do this. So I, I, I jumped into it in about like 19 things picked up in 20 really took off in, you know, 2021 doing that COVID era. So it's, you know, that's how I kind of took off and it's been great with the benefits on the, on the other end. Um, so it's like for everything you put in, you, you get out an equal return. So it's been, paid a great return as well. Yeah, a couple of things you said that I want to go back to. One, you saw a video and it was wrong. Yeah. There is a lot of misinformation sure. on taxes on social media in general. And I think TikTok's a big area. Are you seeing that as well? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, that's what that's what helps me go viral. Like, they're like, oh, tag Duke, tag tax guy. Let's see what he really has to say in the comment section. It's like, we won't believe it till he says it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It's didn't say it, it's not true. That's what they say. <laughs> You, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So, so have you? And I think I saw one where you've you've shown someone else's video, and then you've said, "Okay, that's wrong. Here's the correct right. thing." Is that something you do often? Yeah. So I started more recently, and it's all about the. the it's really about the approach as well, because it'd be funny. I'll be scrolling, and I'll be like, "Oh, this is wrong. Like, they're so wrong." And I and I look on the page, and it says, "Follow back." I'm like, "Oh my god, they're a supporter." So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like oh okay so i always have to start the videos now like hey no hate to this person like I, I love your videos but this is just the right way to do it so i had to develop the approach but like right. it's it's a wake-up call that people follow you and they look up to you because there's certain people that i looked up to and they've said some things to me and it just destroys you it, it'll really like bring you down with oh, yeah. someone you look up to truly like says so and maybe they don't even know that you look up to that person i have no idea who looks up to truly to me maybe this person did not look up to them but just hearing that is just like it, yep. it'll destroy you right um so i never want to create that feeling that someone has given to me so i'm like i always like preface this like hey you know like you know shout out this great i love your videos um but you know my goal in this app is just to provide the accurate information and then i kind of go into it but i make sure i say my say what i have to say at first and so from an education standpoint for yourself, then, mm -hmm. how are you staying on top of everything? Because you're putting out timely videos on things that are yep. happening. Do you have, you know, how do you pick and choose what to put out there? And how do you stay on top of everything that's happening tax wise? Yeah. So I've, I, I literally I have a it's almost an automation that I have. But so if you Google, like if you want to Google taxes, Google taxes, and then there's a search there's a tool in Google that allows you to view only results that's been posted within the past 24 hours. Okay. That's it. So I'll have, I have like 15 tabs. They're all Google searches that happened in the past 24 hours. One's taxes. One was the inflation reduction act. One stimulus, one child tax credit, 
wants tax policy, wants accounting today. Like it's just a bunch of those. Um, Twitter, Reddit, uh, and I believe that's super important to gain a following. To be, you know, have it, you know, that you're putting out news and information. Not only are you putting out education, yep. but you're also putting out new and relevant things because taxes are always forever, forever changing. So that's the whole goal. The only there's a small caveat with that. When you want to be first, sometimes you're wrong. Right. Or uh, sometimes your information is inaccurate when you're when you're growing too fast. So that's um, something that I have to learn. Like, okay, not too fast. Do your due diligence. Work it out because there's, you know, I've learned from my mistakes. Unfortunately, we don't have those mistakes anymore. But it's not about being first. It's about, you know, getting it out there, but make sure it's out there very accurately. When I and I have made those mistakes or, or I have not said it clear enough where it can be taken the wrong way. When I'm like, okay, I did my due diligence. I said it is, but like, Ah, I see why it was taken yes. that way. Let's yep. let, let's make a follow up video. Yep. And we experienced that. I'm sure you did as well with the, you know, the CARES Act and just everything that was coming out so fast back in, yeah. you know, early 2020. A big thing that we got into was the employee retention credit. And I think, you know, we didn't really jump into that until the Consolidated Appropriation Act that made the major changes to it. But I think I had a webinar out in February of, of 21. And I look back at that and I think I did pretty well. But there was a few things that, that we needed more interpretation on. And I'm like, oh, Okay, if I would go back, there's a couple ways I would say this different. And, and, and honestly, it was part of it was just my interpretation on a couple of things was like, okay, this is wrong. This is how I interpret it. Yeah. I went back in future webinars and said, okay, I know I said this back in February, but now this is the case. Yeah. So have you ever done any correction videos like that? Oh, yeah. And then I go on there like, hey, I am completely sorry. Like, I can see how you guys took that away. And then, of course, you just have the people in the comment section. Those people are dumb. We didn't take it that way. I'm like, guys, <laughs> you just have your diehard fans. Like, forget it, Bill. <laughs> but like, you know, I, it's like, you know, it's like, it's, I'm always, I'm, a, I'm literally, I'm obsessed with improvement. Um, whether it be self improvement, whether it be improving the the processes in our business, I'm literally obsessed with it. So all feedback is good feedback to me, whether it's negative, I'm like, and I understand it, and I believe that's the only reason I'm here to, here today because I've taken feedback. Uh, man, I just, you know, straight up and down, listen to it and just make sure I deliver it correctly, uh, going forward. That's awesome. That's a great skill. I'm not sure I'm the best at taking feedback, <laughs> but I, I love I, it. I, I do. It's, uh, but I, it's like, sometimes I just don't want to hear it. And then, <laughs> but I really know I need to, yeah. um, but I'm old. See, I'm done learning. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're young. Yeah, you're, you're still learning all this stuff right. and you can use it a lot longer. Hey, um, uh, so a couple things then. Let's go back to now, you know, you were doing this, you know, 19, you started, 20, it ramped up. Oh, and by the way, I was telling my marketing department that you and I were talking and they they said, let him know that his videos help me get through COVID. And so <laughs> I think that's I awesome. That. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because... Because you're not just educating, you're entertaining too. I mean, right, that's which is yep. huge. It, the entertainment factor is huge. And so, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize what a big deal. So now let's go back to this in general. So you're doing this and you love doing it. Obviously, it shows through when you're doing it. But there also has to be, other than just this education part of it, mm -hmm. which I'm a big, you and I are in the same way with, with a lot. I'm always say, uh, share your knowledge sure. that's i want to share my knowledge whatever i have i want to share it i always figure that's going to come back to me to our company if i'm out educating people do you get like inbound leads direct business then just from the tiktok channel yeah so it's yeah so tiktok is like you know turned us into almost like a million dollar year of business just like just like that and then so it's brand deals and then tiktok leads but now our business just it, it, it's just extremely growing, and so like for example, I post a video today. I went I went live today, like maybe for about thirty minutes. During those thirty minutes, um, so, we're, so I I believe if you're have like a TikTok following or some type of social media following, you gotta have something that you gotta be selling something where people can just check out and not have to talk to a person. How can you cash flow? How can you always make money? So I'm like, okay. Well, we'll get people to reserve their spot for us to file their taxes for two hundred dollars, and then you know we'll finish you know just to reserve their spot. So like during that live, like six or seven people reserved a spot. So that's fourteen hundred dollars just right there. Yeah. And then we had like uh, so I'm like, hey, you know, so that's where you're always going to get your strongest call to action, not in an email, not in a text, 
not in a video, but straight up and down live. This is why you have QVC or you have these live, like, because it's like, it, it's the, even I have, you know, been on live. I'm like, hey, I'll go buy this book. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm going to buy this book. So we've seen a, a stronger call to action, like going live. So the whole purpose is to grow the following, go live, and, and then, you know, try to uh, get them to become a client. So during that live, I think we also received like 20 leads as well. And so we're receiving, and it's just like, well, we're coming to the point where it's like, okay, now we have to maybe pull back a little bit, shut yep. down a little bit, get the staffing correct. And then we're not yep. just hiring anybody at the same time. We're hiring, we got to hire the best. So we're always like building out that foundation. Um, it's very important for me and our team to grow very slowly. We want to control our growth because when, I, when this first happened uh, last year, it was just ridiculous. I cannot keep up. What happened in turn was there was a um, lack of service, quality of service. It was terrible. Um, like, you know, I don't know why people still let those reviews. I mean, but we learn from that. And it's, you, you go too fast. You can't get greedy. Yeah, hey, we got to shut this thing down. Like, yep. and so it comes slow down. We we outsource it to another firm. They didn't, you know, deliver. So it's like, okay, cool. So this year, it's like, we got to control our growth. We know it's going to happen. That's the exciting thing about it. But we have to extremely control it because it could ruin our reputation if we go too fast. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just worried about the money. Um, it, it's not about that. It's really about just building a relationship and building a business that's going to last. I think that's extremely smart. I think some people too often just say, hey, it's business. Let's bring it in, mm -hmm. and then and then worry about it later. But yeah, reputation be huge when you're doing when you were doing this one today. Was this a ten forty call to action or all business? It was a it was a free it was a freestyle. I mean, like <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, I have a video. I'm like, okay, so I just talked about you know a really good thing to talk about. It's like this refund shock that's coming up. I like the, I love that term refund shock um, because you know with the in 2021, we had like five additional COVID credits, such as the child tax credit, the right. self-employed sick and family leave tax credit. You have to increase with the, the child independent care credit. And all those yeah. are just, you know, either going down, is it completely going away or completely being reduced? So that's what, kind of what I was talking about. And then people are like, hey, do you file taxes? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, like, you want to reserve your spot? $200. Boom, I saw it come through. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Great. Guess what, guys? Wow. Anyone who reserves a spot to become a leave, I'll give you a shout out. I'll say your name. I'll say your name in a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, people pay $200 to say the name, but we're also going to fulfill it service but like okay hey paul i just i just got your hey jessica y'all want to be like jessica y'all want to know like <laughs> you know go fill out the form and so like that it makes it, it makes it fun um it makes, so i think taxes should also be always being experience i don't believe it should be very transactional i feel like we want to create the experience and i tell my team all the time like dude our competition is not the it's not turbo tax it's not h and r block it's not the you know tax firm down the street like our tax firm starting in 2023 we're going to be competing with our i see our like the four seasons equinox like the these, these luxury brands that are very good at creating the experiences. So I believe we're just a relationship-based business that creates experiences. But we just happen to do taxes. That's our byproduct on how we create experiences. And so anything that I'm doing, I'm trying to create an experience. You want to be like Jessica? You want to, and like, and it just makes it more right. fun because taxes are always seen as boring. And that's, that's the whole goal and the vision of the business is to make taxes more of an experience rather than just you know, something of transactional. I love that. You and I, when we were in, uh, where were we? Vegas a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I think we talked Party about up. the uh, yeah the area. We we, we talked about <laughs> Ron Baker and yeah. his uh, his subscription pricing. You were talking about yeah. going to see him speak. Did you see him speak? Yeah, I saw him speak, and so I'm like, okay, dude, this dude's on it. Like he's already like, and I actually yeah yeah you're like hey buy his book. I think I bought it that second, and I like. <laughs> See, hey, those live events or in person, exactly. I guess in person has the strongest call to action. Exactly. You, gosh, you're right. I need a I need commission. I do. <laughs> I, right, now you talk to your boy, Ron. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so kind of it's great because it's a thought that I already had, but I did not know how to explain it or convey it. Yeah. And it's great being able to, because, you know, this is something I have to communicate with my team and something that's always abstract in my brain that I'm not able to communicate. So Ron Breaker is an intelligent individual. Anyone has not heard of him, he has this book called Time's Up that I'm reading right now. And it's just, I mean, I read it in the gym, like, oh, it's so good. And I saw him speak. And I'm like, gosh, like, this is what I'm trying to do. This is exactly what I want. And so seeing that, he teaches me how to do it and make it better. I had no idea how to do it, how to execute, who who else is doing it. And you realize just like a lot of other people do it. And that dude's just like, gosh, he's like such a valuable asset to the accounting industry. Oh, yeah. 
He, he's, I've had him on the podcast a couple times and I'm always just in awe of hearing him speak and his ideas. And he been, he's been pushing the envelope on pricing for a long time, yeah. value pricing. And now he's to the subscription pricing. Let, let's, we kind of are on pricing right now. Let's talk a little about that. Cause you do on your website show like a three tier pricing model. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something you're going to continue? Or are you going to start going towards the subscription then that yeah. Ron talks about? So right now, like we're kind of like, well, and this is, mm, this is what I learned from Ron. This is what's going to change the game. Uh, so we were doing kind of what he talked about. Like we just had our, our services and we just broke it down monthly or annually like okay like this is what it's typically uh it's gonna cost divided by 12 this is gonna be monthly uh-uh we're not doing that no more so starting in, in 2023 so it's just like we're truly like creating a membership as if this was like a like it's very it's very how we think about our packages now is very similar if you were to go to the gym and they charge you per equipment that you use. Oh, you want to use the um, bench press? Oh, right. You want to yep. use the dumbbells? Oh, you would like to use the pool and the sauna and the lockers as well? That uh -uh. Hey, this is what it is. So I work out on equal. Hey, you know, if you wear, this is a, it's a it's membership. You can use any equipment that you would like. So that's the, the kind of the vision that we're going through going to and that's what kind of ron uh you know had me wake up on so it's like a more of a membership we want it monthly because i love just you know sometimes you don't even have to have your you know your people on the phone you see the, the money come through the bank account so we've, we've already sold a couple actually which has been great they started in 2023 um and we're going from like a starter package which is like the very very basic kind of like you know the hamburger at the mcdonald's which is 185 a month and we're looking at the professional package which is like kind of like our, probably gonna be our most top seller we're probably looking at 550 to $500 a month and then we just have this absurd one for those people who are like yeah I want, I want everything starting at $3,000 a month and that's just going to provide value we're going to send them like monthly baskets whatever whatever I just told my team like hey what is the craziest thing that you can think of you know for a client man? you know right. you have some you know let's give them a puppy I don't think we <laughs> need <laughs> So, yeah. hey, but that's what you do. Just it's think crazy. outside the box. Yeah, Just come crazy. up with it. We got some really good things. What? And I can't think of the term he uses now, but he always uses his Walt Disney. Uh, um, and he says up in the experience, but he uses a specific term. I don't know if you've heard him say it yet. Or, yeah. Maybe, right. maybe I'm not that far in the book yet. I got you, though. He usually talks about when he's talking. I, I'll, I'll have to look it up because it's a it's a you would love the term, I would think. And I can't think of it up right now, but it's basically giving them more than they expect type of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's just up in the experience, that yeah. type of thing. Always making it. And it, 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 like you talked about, you know, they were going to do this big parade at the holidays. And, and, and his people were telling him, well, that's not going to it's just going to cost us money. It's not really going to bring anybody else here, but it's going to give them this experience they wouldn't have expected we're going to up exactly. that experience for them exactly. so that's the goal yep all right well that's awesome and so you know with this pricing that you're changing and everything now what i think and i think is important and i think you probably agree and i think ron probably agrees too we're gonna have to tag ron on this episode we keep talking about him the, the whole time but um <laughs> is that having a specific niche mm -hmm. helps you one, it may just be 1040 Info in general, maybe small business, but you have a niche of, of uh, creators and artists and, and yep. startup businesses. And so do you feel the same that building a niche practice or a niche service industry is helpful? Yes, it's a, probably one of the best decisions we made. It's one of the scariest decisions you made because you're still not sure, hey, do I cut everybody off? But we still like we're, we, we market ourselves as content creators and like, you know, entrepreneurs but why i can tell you it's the best decision ever going in this direction it's allowed us to become experts experts in this field which is like insane because we're learning about like you know secret things like certain apps uh that that make things better or certain industry leaders um so we're, we're becoming not only a resource to them for their accounting and taxes but like how to save money or how to make more money and then how to connect with others you just learn so much more uh i remember sometimes we work with like a couple of dentists we work with and they ask certain questions that I'm just like, mm, I don't know how to answer it. If, you know, if I was, if this was a general practice, I mean, of course we'll be able to answer it. But if it was like a more of a complex question where they need advice. And so I felt bad because I lacked the value. I mean, like there's certain things right. like we have some people who are in construction or landscape. How do I create a bid? How do I create a commercial bid? 
uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I don't, I, I can help you on the 1040. Um, but it's little things like that where we lack the value. And I'm like, this is this, you know, this is kind of a disservice. So we're like, you know, we, we outsource those type of things. So yeah, niching down has allowed us to do so much better. And I, I discovered, I, I've always knew, known about niche, but I, I really discovered the importance of experts. Mainly when I started, like, I had an eye problem. And I went to like a, a, a minute clinic, like, hey, dude, like, there's something wrong with my eye. They're like, oh, snap, you need to go see an eye doctor. I went to go see an eye doctor. They referred me out to another doctor. Then I got to go see a, car, a, a cornea specialist. And of course, they, they charge more, but they were able to get, you know, the problem solved. So it's like niching is, is so important. I mean, like another example I can give is like, you know, a, a parent that has a sick child. Well, you, you know, you can take them to a, um, a doctor or you can take them to a, you know, pediatric, which is a, a doctor that specializes in children. What if the child has a heart problem as well? Well, you will take them to a pediatric cardiologist. So you get niched down and niched down specifically because that is a serious need if a parent's willing, they're going to pay that money to save their kid's life. And so that's what we do for our creators and our artists and our ent- entertainers. But we just, instead of saving their life, we're, we're making their lives easier. We're creating an experience. Um, so I believe it's the most important thing. I believe it allows you to charge a lot more because you bring the value and you have the confidence to charge a lot more um, because you know what you bring to the table. Yeah, man, you are all over all my key topics that I love talking about and love hearing people do. Because because it was when I was in practice, I was, you know, before I started Trimerit, I was a generalist. And I look back at that time and I think, man, I probably was not helping (laughs) too many of my clients to the max because I was trying to do everything. I was doing the fast food restaurants and I was doing the construction companies and I was doing the dental and I was doing the auto uh, automotive dealer. And I'm like, I I was no not an expert in anything. When I started to try merit and having this small niche of a tax code I deal with, I just saw that value. Yeah. And, and you, you're, you've you learned that a lot earlier in life than me, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this your firm grow um, over the next, uh, well, I'm probably after about uh, 10 years, I might not be paying attention to this industry anymore. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but th- for the next 10 years, I'm watching to see All what right, you're brother. doing. I got you. Um, one more thing, I guess, because you, you had mentioned this too in, in technology technology and and you know like apps you said for your clients how about like tech stack for you are there specific things you're always trying to automate and get better at or work together how about how about running your practice from a technology standpoint what's great thing about automation is it can be a very great thing and be a very deadly thing as well so what we've learned is before we automate we have to truly understand the process and the value of the automation we have to understand the true value of what what it means to automate. So for example, like if we're um, sending out email campaigns, like we have a sequence that, that automatically, you know, it's sent out a text message and a thing like that. But once we've done it manually and see the process, that's why it, it, it's extremely important to us. So things that we're always trying to automate is client updates. Client updates, make sure they're always updated because when I started this firm, people were always like, uh, you know, communication. Communication is super important. Yep. So, th- like, those emails, we're, we're always, like, you know, we're trying to automate. Um, and when a client signs up, when they even fill out a form, they're going to get a send a text message. They're going to get sent an update. They're going to get sent that, 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 and this, that. So, I believe automation uh, it saves us a lot of time. Uh, I love it because it saves us time and it makes it the that client or member or customer relationship experience a lot better because it feels like we're still in... Um, communication um with them all right so i think we hit all the key topics anything that you feel we missed that you want to expand on before we wrap up here um so if there's anyone out there listening to this podcast thinking about getting into the content creation i would say go for it um it, it, it's a great way to market your business um i it's it's literally free marketing um so the whole purpose any business these eyes they need marketing they, i mean like any business to grow they, they're always going to pay for marketing that's how our, our word of mouth referrals are a really great thing too um so just let this be your motivation this is your sign right if you're like dang i need a <laughs> sign boom i'm hitting you in the head wake up <laughs> there you go but that's kind of what, what i would want to tell people hey let's let's get on this platform and let's help. Let's also help each other out. I can also see sometimes the accounting and tax community can be very toxic. Uh, I don't. I mean, let's just help each other. You know, we're all brothers and sisters. Yep. We're all in this in, in together. Let's all grow together. Yeah, I noticed that at, at QuickBooks Connect, there was a lot of collaboration. Yeah. I think going on there. There was a really good group. Yep. Uh, 
I kind of bailed on you guys on the club night after <laughs> after a little while there. It's not really my thing, but that was, that was a good time. Hey, yeah. a couple things before we wrap up. I'm going to ask you for contact information, which I think pretty much is just Duke loves taxes everywhere. Yeah. Sure. But you you can tell us that. But before that, at the end of each show, you know, we talked about a bunch of business stuff and tax stuff and stuff that we're all passionate about. You and I are definitely passionate about. But what are your outside of work passions? What do you love doing that is not work related? Uh, are you? I know you. Um, it sounds like go to the gym and work out. Is there yeah. other things that you have passions for outside of work? Um, I like um, playing the piano. Oh, and I'm, I'm so taught. And then I love growing the relationship with my girlfriend. I, I, I love spending time with her. Definitely want a family someday. So I'm always looking to improve our relationship and improve myself. So I would say. Those are the two things, playing the piano and, you know, kicking it with her. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then if people want to get hold of you, is there other places besides Duke Loves Taxes? I'm guessing they can find you there. Yeah, Duke Loves Taxes. Um, it's, a, it's a great one. Um, workwithduke.com. Um, I'm also in the process of coming out with like a, a total, like, full-blown education course for EAs and CPAs and any other tax professionals. Um, that want to you know, either beginning or taxes learn how to market their uh, practice. It's called taxtakeoff.com. That's coming out in November of 2023. Wow. That price in that minimum is going to be like five grand. But right now we're just pr- have it for pre order for like nine ninety seven. Um, so check that out. We got a couple pre orders in. I'm like, okay, cool. Like it, it doesn't drop to November 2023, but people are already ready. It's excited. So it's like <clears throat> my whole goal right now is to build the foundation of my business, of this business, then delegate it off, and then where I'm going into education for not only you know business owners but other tax professionals because I believe this industry is kind of like <sighs> so. Let's bring it back up, and I'm here. I am. All right. Well, this is this is uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, interviews I've done <laughs> so far. I love seeing what you're doing just starting from the digital marketing to how you're running your business and and i think everybody can learn a lot so i really appreciate you being on the show today love it thanks for having me Randy. thank you for joining us today on the unique cpa you can find all the links and show notes for today's episode as well as more about trimerit at the unique cpa.com Remember to subscribe and join us for our next episode where we'll be going beyond compliance into forging new pathways of delivering value to your clients, diversifying your revenue streams, and leading edge management techniques and styles.